I recently made a video about a mixing technique called compander saturation, which can be used to restore dynamics to a signal after doing clipping. I got a number of comments asking how this is any different from a transient shaper, which can also be used for the same purpose. They're both ways to take a squared off clipped signal and make them dynamic. But in this short video, I want to show you how they're not the same thing and how compander saturation is arguably better. I'll leave a link to the original video in the description for anyone who isn't yet familiar with the technique. It's only six minutes long, so go watch it then come back. Here's a sample I made which will clearly show the difference between compander saturation and transient shaping. It also might help you understand what transient shaping is. So we have some rise and fall swells. We have percussive sounds, and we also have some reverse versions of that sound which make a reverse swell. If I run the sample through a chain that simply clips it using a G-clip, let's see what it looks like through an oscilloscope. Notice how when the level hits a certain threshold, it's totally chopped off. It never goes above the clipper's threshold. This is the normal behavior of a clipper, as well as most forms of saturation and distortion. Now let's put it through the next chain, which has a clipper with the exact same settings, but it also has a transient shaper at the end. I'm using the Kilohertz transient shaper to do this. Watch how the transient shaper reacts to the percussive transient moments. Notice how the clip signal only goes above the clipping threshold whenever there's a percussive transient. Transient shapers don't actually restore a sound's original volume envelope from before it was distorted. It actually has no idea what the original volume envelope was, since that gets lost during the clipping stage, but it uses some trickery to detect when a transient has occurred in the sound, which is typically when there's an abrupt significant change in level. Then it momentarily increases the gain according to the envelope that you set. This is kind of like an ADSR envelope. So when a transient moment hasn't been detected, the sound is clipped the exact same way as with a simple clipper, with no added dynamics. Now let's compare both the simple clipper and the transient shaper to the compander clipper. Like I showed in the last video, I'm using the free M Saturator plugin to do this. You can also get a similar effect with Kilohertz Distortion's dynamics knob. So you can see that this is the best of both worlds. Maybe the best of three worlds, you get heavy distortion at 100% mix, the clipper ceiling no longer exists like in the G clipper transient shaping example, and the signal's amplitude envelope essentially perfectly matches the dry signal. So assuming that you already like your sound's volume envelope, but you want to add distortion to change the tone and add harmonics, then a compander is a great tool for the job because it distorts while keeping the original volume envelope. On the other hand, for something very transient that doesn't need to retain any swelling, like maybe electronic drums, for example, a transient shaper might actually work really well since it will apply a clean, robotic looking volume envelope to the clipped sound, but just know that it won't give any dynamics back at those non-transient moments. So try this out and see what works for you. Thanks for watching.